Welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Each week, we let you in on the secrets of Southern Idaho and speak to the people who make it such a unique hidden gem. I'm your host, Connie Stouffer. Welcome and thank you for joining us on Secrets Out Idaho. I'm really excited about today's episode because we're gonna be joined by the United Way of South Central Idaho. We'll be talking to them as well as community partners about the amazing work that they do in the Magic Valley, as well as the impact that it can bring by partnering with United Way as well as businesses to make a difference. Uh, Joining me first today is the CEO of the United Way of South Central Idaho, Bill Mykrantz. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Yeah, thank you for having me, Connie, and thank you for helping us put this together. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to to really share in a different um, a way than we have in the past, especially with uh, the pandemic and things that we have going on. Um, this gives us a great opportunity. Of course. Thank you. Um, so just to kick it off, I'm going to have you tell me a little bit about your work with the United Way of South Central Idaho and what it means to partner with the community. Yeah, so um, United Way of South Central Idaho, um, our mission is that we fight for the health, the education, financial stability for every person and every community of South Central Idaho. Ultimately, what we're trying to achieve is that um, we will eliminate barriers for uh, children and individuals and families uh, so that they have an opportunity to be successful. and in life and in school and and retirement and and all of those type of things we uh had to do a deep deep evaluation um, about six years ago and change some conversations around what is it that you um what is it that you need and had to ask uh, what is it that you truly need um, if that makes sense we had to kind of uh, get to the root of the problem um, because we were investing dollars in our community that was having an impact. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, it was it was making a difference, but we weren't gaining any traction. And the needs um, kept rising and the dollar requests kept rising. And I often say that we, if we had all the money in the world, we could solve all the problems in our community this year. But they would all be back next year. And that's, that's kind of the, the route that we were, we were taking. And, and although again, it was impactful, it wasn't, um, wasn't changing, um, the cycle, if that makes sense. So we really had to take a deep dive and look at how do we create lasting changes and how do we prevent things from happening in the first place? And that's where we started opening up what we had as partners to a more deeper, um, relationship and a true partnership to really look at um, how can we work together? Because we knew that we couldn't do it by ourselves. Um, It really was gonna take us to unite um, our community together, you know, people, individuals, families, businesses, other nonprofits, you know, everybody really to make a difference. And we started by looking at um, early education and how we needed to really have a focus on, on that. And if we could focus on that, it would, in, in essence, change the outcome of somebody that's uh, going on to college or getting some type of certification or, or whatnot. So as we um, started that journey, we've just been de- developing these really powerful relationships. And the conversations also changed to be, um, we take money off the table and we just talk about what is it that you truly need and organizations um, like Cliff Bar and Dot Foods and all these um, amazing organizations stepped forward and said, we may not have a lot of money, but we have product or we have this connection or we have this resource. And we've been able to leverage that to meet the needs of our community and then utilize what dollars we do have in different ways of, of meeting those true costs, if you will. So... That's kind of where we um, have kind of taken off to, and and it kind of all wraps around what we now um, use to deliver and align all those those resources to kind of a community school strategy. And as you'll hear, you know, um, talk about from uh, our partners, is that this partnership, it, no one can do it by themselves. We really have to kind of rally together 
and um, utilize our expertise in what that is. You know, we're not the expertise in after school programs. We're not the expertise in, in um, homelessness, you know, right? Um, so we rely on those partners that already are doing that work and doing it well. And then we just work on them to create kind of um, lasting changes within that program. And how do we prevent some of these things from happening? So we learn from the data. So we look at ourselves as kind of the data experts and um, assessments and, and things like that to really understand what is our community's biggest needs and how do we address those. I think that's so great how you guys, um, how you talked about just taking the money off the table and sitting around a table and saying, what do you need? Because I think oftentimes, uh, and it's not a criticism of people who want to help, because I've been in the same position too, where um, I perceive a need and I want to I want to make something better. So I, I want to give something. And there's been times when they said, actually, that's not what we need. We really need this. And it was a, an issue or a concern that I was unaware of. And I think it's so important. Um, and also looking at the long-term impacts of the difference between giving a man a fish and teaching him how to fish, you know, really looking at how do we prevent these issues from happening again? You know, I think it's great because you guys, you, you do help in a crisis when someone needs food or there's an emergency or someone finds themselves um, needing, you know, emergency housing or something. Um, but also looking at um, how do we positively impact the community so that in in a year or five years or 10 years, there are fewer people finding themselves in crisis um, and more people not only not being in crisis, but thriving because um, there's a big difference between just getting by and, and thriving. And I think that's just so amazing that you guys have been able to build this coalition of support between businesses and philanthropic minded people uh, to do this good work. Yeah, thank you. It, it's It's been you know challenging as, as a lot of things are um, especially with, you know, the, where we're at in uh, society and, and in our world really. Um, but ultimately, um, the mission hasn't changed, right? It's still to provide opportunities to make sure everybody, you know, um, has maybe not the same opportunity, but they have an opportunity, you know, whether that's, um, every kid entering school ready and um, every kid having, um, you know, their, their belly full and glasses if they need it and uh, dental care, you know, so all those things are essentially what we kind of look at as um, easy wins, if you will, but they're complicated on the back end. Mm -hmm. But if you can give a kid a pair of glasses and they can, just go on and flourish and learn and, and be able to read and, and just be successful, then that's a, that's a positive uh, mark in um, that, that individual or that child's life that's going to um, have great positive results for him in the future. Um, some things are more complicated you know, and, and we don't shy away from that. Um, we also, we often say that we're, um, you know, we're the, the hand raisers, we're the, um, you know, the, the go getters, the, the change makers, you know, who we work with, that's who we, you know, we surround ourselves with, um, people that want to make, uh, and grow or go after the difficult, uh, situations that are going to make high level changes, um, in our community. And, and this work and the great thing about being part of a, a United Way is um, it doesn't just stop at our community. You know, it, it goes into our state. We work closely with, you know, um, the other United Ways in our state and um, even in our world. You know, there's 1,800 United Ways, you know, and there's a, a great uh, benefit to that. Um, but I think what's even, you know, cooler is that we are actually our own entity. Uh, we have our own 501c3 um, charter, and and we govern um, ourselves. So we know we have a local board that um, we focus on on uh, what our community needs. You know, maybe not what the the state or um, our nation needs, but um, what locally you know our needs are, and and it differs. You know, and so it's been um, 
it's been awesome really, you know, to see the partnerships and, and, um, you know, as, as we kind of go through this process, you'll be able to, um, to understand it and everyone, you know, hopefully we'll have a chance to kind of listen and hear, you know, the, the impact of what it's not just United way, but it's the people that we're aligning, um, together and, um, being able to not just have impact, but have generational impact in our community. That's so amazing. And the perfect segue to um, turn it over to Sonia and Susan to talk about a great partnership that you guys have with Cliff Bar. And so we're going to turn it over to them and hear about their partnerships and what they've been doing in the community with the United Way of South Central Idaho. Thank you, Bill. Yep. I'm with Sonia of the United Way of South Central Idaho and Susan with Cliff Bar in Twin Falls. Thank you both for being on the show today. Thanks, Thanks you for having us. Of course. So first, I'm going to start um, by asking you, Susan, what does the United Way of South Central Idaho mean to this community? Uh, that's a great question. You know, when I when I reflect on, you know, what is what does United Way mean and and what do they do for our community? I really come back and and think that they are, they're that conduit. So there's so many resources to come through and be supportive to the most um, needed individuals in our community. Um, for us here at Cliff Bar, it made so much great sense in supporting United Way because there were so many commonalities between Cliff Bar and United Way in supporting growing a healthy community, a community where we want our kids to be raised in, a community that is giving supportive, inclusive community and United Way with their philosophy and the campaigns that they do, they bring a lot and give a lot back to our community. And so it really made sense for us to be, to partner up and, and create a really great, thoughtful um, uh, partnership. So, um, when I first met Sonia, I knew, I just knew that Cliff Bar and United Way would have a really great relationship for many, many years to come um, in supporting our community. That's awesome. And Sonia, I want to give you an opportunity to chime in too about what these community partnerships mean to you and to the United Way. Yeah, well, wow. Thank you, Susan. Um, I think that you really brought together some pieces that are very important, which is that we're a connector, you know, connecting nonprofits to for-profits and being able to leverage what we have and having that potluck mentality and being able to identify not just at work and in the community what the needs are, but having that great communication and that great partnership to have transparency and be vulnerable and say, you know, hey, I have actually employees right now that are in need, or, you know, we really want to target particular organizations in the community. Is that something you can help with? And I think that that has been one of the great successes. Cliff Bar rocks the volunteer um, opportunities in the community. And that's something that we really try, you know, give Advocate Volunteer with the United Way. And we can't hold a candle to what they're doing, but we can definitely support them, whether it be with water or, you know, adding other volunteers to their events or whatever it is that that they've got going on, um, it's been a really good partnership to be able to know together what we can do. That's awesome, Susan. Can you talk to me a little bit about one of your your most memorable projects you've worked on uh, between Cliff Bar and the United Way? Maybe those volunteer programs or some of the other initiatives that you've partnered on. Yeah, you know um, when we have the privilege of being able to close down our bakery. Um, and we go out and volunteer in our community. So literally, we vacate the bakery. We go out and we pick a project. And in the past, it's been BLM, where we um, planted sagebrush seedlings um, out in burned areas. We've also partnered with Twin Falls County and have gone out to rock um Oh, to balance rock and, and donate it. And what is so great with United Way is that they have so many different unique ways to partner with us. As Sonia said, just giving us water to help support our volunteers is a great, it's great way to partner and it's really simple. Um, another partnership that I know that is near and dear to Sonia's heart and United Way is our partnership over leader cast women. It's it's all about empowering women within our community and doing that in a thoughtful, impactful way. Um, 
And it's so great to see the women come into our bakery, attend the one day focused on empowering women. Um, that has been a phenomenal partnership. Obviously, um, that partnership is near to near and dear to Cliff Bar's heart, just with our Luna, our Luna brand. Um, at, um, and and how that how that is, um, and it's just a great, really thoughtful partnership that way. And you know, it's just United Way just makes it easy, right? As as an organization, we like to just make stuff easy for our volunteers. For us and United Way, I know I can make one phone call and I'll have five contacts in helping support a team member or um, helping support a program, a cause, anything like that. And that's where United Way becomes such a great partner is they have that information. They have those partnerships to help us all come together and support our own community. Um, so, yeah. Wow. That's it's exciting, right? So uh, I am like, I literally want to put on like a cape and fly around the room right now because it's just, <laughs> it is just, it's so great. To hear. I mean, I talk to you all the time, you know, one of the things that I was telling, you know, the CEO of the United Way of Salsa and Idaho the other day, Bill, my crams, is I was telling him that, you know, I really have friendships and I think that what you're touching on Susan is so important, which is that, yes, we have a partnership in the community and yes, we want to impact and we say all those things, but doing it together, like as friends, like we have fun, like we <laughs> laugh, we mess up, we, you know, like we figure things out and make them better the next time we do them. I mean, not every project comes without, you know. Um, challenges and so or learnings <laughs> like never do that again never do that again yeah it's um and that's really what's exciting about you know the partnership is being able to also be friends and have fun I think that that has been one of the biggest things I've really enjoyed with working even with Cliff Bar has been you know how I really feel at home with Cliff Bar and that um, embracing an organization is really allowed, I think, for us to do things that no one else can do together. Yeah, I think just to take off on that um, is that there's this piece about having the comfortability and being in a space where you can have a lot of fun and think of really crazy ideas and off the wall <laughs> ideas to support our community. And you're like, let's talk about this. Let's let's map this out. Let's figure it out because it has such a great return on return for our community is we can figure it out. Who needs to have, um, have a seat at the table to get this done. And it's, you know, having that ability to geek out essentially with these <laughs> ideas is it's what creates that energy, right? People love that energy to be like, Oh my gosh, what are you guys doing? How are you doing this? What's going to be the impact to your community? It's, I'm a geek. Um, I, I love stuff like this. And to be able to have somebody in an organization like United Way to be able to do that with is phenomenal. It makes it, again, I go back to easy. Wow. You, you literally um, just making my whole day. <laughs> And I think that's just so amazing about the partnerships, because I think so many people like individuals and companies want to do something to make a difference. But problems and projects sometimes seem overwhelming and too much for any one person to do it. But I think, Susan, your point about how the United Way makes it easy is that you can just call and say, this is what I want to do or this is what I need help with. And then they bring the resources to the table to make it happen. And I think that's what's also great about our community, too, is that we all kind of just come together when we need to, to, to tackle big problems. And that's just so exciting to be able to do that. Yeah. It's, um, I, I grew up in a small town and so, um, I love that small town community feel, right? We're all in this, we're all going to be supportive of our community and let's grow our community in a thoughtful, meaningful way. And not just a specific sector or anything. It's moving that whole community forward. And Twin Falls has that. It has that small town feel. And that's the beauty of it. People love that about Twin. When you can go to the grocery store and you can see your neighbors, um, or you're walking in front of your house on the, or you're walking on the trail and you get to see people within your own community. It's, um, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that's what really makes Twin Falls special. Um, 
is bringing that in and making sure that we are cultivating that even as Twin Falls grows. So as we, you know, as we grow these, these nonprofits and these community partners and these businesses um, continue to engage in this way, it's, that's powerful, right? That's, that's where people want to be is in a community that is like that. And I feel we have that. And again, as we grow, we just need to cultivate that and make sure that we stay true to that, that small town feel. And I'd like to add that Susan is not just from, you know, a small town. She also worked in the Wood River forever. And um, her ability to be able to see broad and know the impact and how it, the ripple effect goes into place is huge because it does have a ripple effect. Yeah, I'm a small town girl by heart and I, I never want to leave Idaho. I love Idaho. I love the people. Um, and it's so awesome to work with United Way and work for Cliff Bar um, in giving back to a community that goes us so much. It's, a, it's exciting. I love it. Susan, I want to ask you about Cliff Bar's aspirations. I know that's a big driver for the organization. And I just want to ask you how that maybe has aligned with the partnership with United Way of South Central Idaho. Yeah, so... Cliff Bar is such a unique company is not only do we look at, you know, what, what we do from a business standpoint, but as a five aspiration company, we actually have five lenses that we look at to engage our success, such as our business, our brands, our people, our community, and our planet. And, and I love working with, with um, United Way because it's such an easy connect with sustaining and building our community. You know, for us, it's really important that we we're part of a community that is promoting a healthy, sustainable community. And, and to do that, you know, we volunteer, we, we give out product, um, we do monetary donations. We ask our um, team members here to also engage um, in what their passions are and and United Way is just that great partner because they they understand the landscape of Southern Idaho and they know the needs of our communities. And so it's so easy to say for Sonia just to come up and say, Hey, this community needs this. How can how can Cliff Bar help support this? Or what is what can Cliff Bar bring to the table? And again, it's just is such a powerful piece of being able to be a five aspiration company to have those type of conversations. Because that is really important to the foundation and growth of our here and the growth in, and supporting of our communities. So it's, I mean, it's a win-win. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Sonia and Susan, for joining me today. Um, Sonia, you're going to join me on some conversations with other folks from the community talking about community partnerships with the United Way of South Central Idaho. And I just want to thank um, Susan for joining us today. Okay, now Sonia and I are here with Jeff, and we're going to talk with Jeff a little bit about his work with the United Way of South Central Idaho. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course. So I'm just going to um, jump right in and talk to you in, about your work with the United Way of South Central Idaho and what it means to the community. Okay, great. Uh, United Way has been helpful in several areas that I'm involved with. Uh, I'll primarily speak about Martha and Mary's food pantry first, if that's okay. That'd be perfect. Yay. Martha Mary's Food Pantry is the only uh, pantry that we have here in Jerome. And uh, we've been around uh, probably about eight, 10 years, uh, and we're 100% volunteer. So uh, we're challenged sometimes with different aspects of it. And United Way has been very helpful in several areas in helping us to uh, fulfill our mission to the community which is providing nutritious food to those that are food insecure. Um, they really stepped up in March when this COVID-19 issue hit us and they, they helped us. I could, I could talk forever about it. So I'll just briefly say they helped us with uh, not only in locating food sources for us, but in helping with financial support, finding the uh, financial support for us. Um, 
and even all the way to the point of personally coming out and helping us during our drive-through uh, operation that we had to go to meet the health and safety standards that we had. I mean, Sonia and Bill and Dolores, they, they showed up and they just helped. So I can't say enough about how United Way has supported Martha and Mary's food pantry because there's not much more they could have done to help us get through or get started with that time. And they still continue to. So that's and this is so amazing. And I'm sure I'm convinced that Sonia has a clone somewhere because she is everywhere. Um, and I feel like anytime you, anybody in the community needs something, you can call her or Bill and there's someone at your door helping, which I just think is amazing. Yeah, uh, she's a crazy lady, but uh, <laughs> Dolores is a hard worker also in Bill too. I, so I, I mean, all three of them equally are, are just, uh, have been a great support for us. And um, not only at the pantry, but I'm also involved, I'm on the school board, but uh, here in Jerome, but uh, also involved with the community schools program that United Way has. And Dolores has really stepped up on that program and, and helping with the schools. And I'm just, again, United Way bringing that, uh, I guess it's been a couple of years ago, or wasn't it, Sonia? Yeah. Yep, two years, and well, two and a half years now. Um, but since Dolores has been there as our community school coordinator, I feel like it's finally taken hold and, and we're really starting to get some data and information that's able to impact the community. Yeah, I mean, she's been great all the way into the classrooms and everything and assisting. And um, actually, it's been a, a kind of a blessing for her involvement over at the pantry also because it's helped give that additional uh, personal relationship with the community and some of the students or the families that come to the uh, pantry see her active there too and it helps open up some other ways that she can help through the community schools program so that that in-depth involvement with the community is just it's just been huge that's amazing and Jeff I know you wear a lot of other hats in the community too do you want to talk a little bit about how uh, maybe those the missions of those other organizations are able to be more effective or realized by working with United Way? Yes. Um, my passion is, well, it's, it's in several areas, uh, mostly for the community as a whole, but food. But I, I just, I, I'm a hunter also, and I'm involved with Idaho uh, Hunters Feeding the Hungry, uh, which is a not another nonprofit uh, that pays for the processing of wild game to be donated throughout the state of Idaho. And uh, I, United Way has helped in opening some other doors for our distribution of that. Uh, most recently, last hunting season or last season, 2019-2020, uh, uh, Fish and Game in the Magic Valley uh, had uh, a program and they had several animals that they were um, able to donate to us and I, the uh, United Way help us, helped us find other pantries in the area that we could distribute the wild game. And that was over, we provided over 200,000 um, protein portions of meals throughout the community. And it, that was with United Way support as well. 200,000. Let yeah. that resonate just for a minute. That is amazing, Jeff. Yeah. It, it is. It's, 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 uh, and it's good it's, protein too. It's lean and it's nutritious and it's just wonderful. That is awesome. Good quality protein. Yeah. Especially when you consider the size of our communities, right? Uh, 200,000 portions. That's, I mean, if everybody in the community needed a meal, you could have probably fed every single person with, with, that with that um and and luckily not everybody is in need so i mean multiple meals for families that's just that's amazing well and and uh one of the conditions and it's a state condition that uh we can't prepare that meat we have to give it out in a frozen form mm -hmm. and so it's it's ground meat that we give out and we in distributing it at through the different pantries uh it gets out to more people and then they can, and we also, instead of distributing it all at one time, we've kind of spread it out. And the timing of it couldn't have been better with the coronavirus and the runs that they had on meat. It was difficult to find meat. And it was at that time that we were, uh, we had an abundance of it that we were able to share. So it was a blessing in, in several ways, besides just, in my belief, the best red protein that's out there. Uh, <laughs> it, it just made available at no cost to a lot of people. 
And, and Jeff, can you touch a little bit on, um, you know, we've made you a hub, whether you realized it or not um, at the time that we did it, but we, we know that you serve others and you've, you're in communication with several other pantries. I want to say you serve uh, like 11 other pantries that you check in with and just say, how are you doing? Can you kind of share how that works? Yes. Well, well, that's primarily through the Idaho Hunters Feeding the Hungry that I'm in contact with the 11 different pantries here in the Magic Valley region. And that, and that also includes Blaine County and, uh, and the Hunger Coalition up there and uh, Kimberly, Buell, Filer, um, Gooding. Um, I can't remember all of them, but yeah. there, there's 11 of them that are around. And it's through that that we were distributing the, the wild game. Um, we at the pantry uh, is most we receive food from the USDA as well as from Idaho Food Bank. And most of that is we try to focus on giving that to the Jerome community. Uh, but in some cases, we have an abundance of food that comes in through some of the contacts, again, with United Way, where there's a trucking firm that has some product that's um, has not been accepted by a local distributor or by a retailer, uh, they usually have to, do they usually donate that instead of sending it back. And when we have an abundance of that, that's when we reach out to those other pantries and let them know that, um, for an example, Shoshone is a smaller pantry and they don't have access to the, all the retail and everything that's down here. So when we have an abundance, we'll contact them and they'll come up here and pick up that additional food yeah. uh, that we have that's been provided for us. So awesome. Thank you so much for all you do, Jeff. You're amazing. Oh, no, it, it's it's not me. I'm just, uh, this. God's got his hand on all this and everything that's happening. And that's that's the real focus that we have is uh, without getting too far into that. But love the Lord your God with your whole heart and your whole soul and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what we're doing is, is loving our neighbor as ourself because we all need a little bit of help at some time in our life or we know somebody who does. And or we're going to. Uh, that's one of the the big things that's kind of broken my heart a little bit, but it's also been a light. And that's the senior population that we serve through the pantry. Yep. Um, they're they're very uh, uh, proud people, and they don't like to feel like they're getting a handout. And uh, and we try to promote a real loving and respectful environment. And they've responded to that. So they feel comfortable about being there. And, and it's pretty tough for them when they have to choose between medicine or food. They kind of have to choose food. So the food that we have available for them uh, really helps supplement them, helps them get them through. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and one thing, too, that I just keep being reminded of, I think, when I have these conversations with Sonia, is that, you know, there's so many people in our community who want to help or have ways to help. Um, but on their own, uh, they don't know where to put that energy or those resources or those funds or can't distribute them widely enough um, in that by bringing folks together, you know, your groups, Jeff and Sonia and the senior population or just different people in our communities can make good things happen that we couldn't do on our own. Yeah. Um, and so I just like I'm always just awe, in awe and amazed of the wonderful things that we can do together that maybe couldn't happen if we didn't know to ask for help or know to go to the United Way of South Central Idaho to say, hey, I've got all all this wild game meat. What do I do with it? How do I get it out to everybody? Um, or how do I reach this group in this community that I want to help? Um, and it's just, I think it's just a really great thing. Oh, it is great. That's one of the great blessings that as a conduit in getting the food from wherever to the people that need it, I, I, this coronavirus has been, I, my heart has been warmed by the support that we get from federal, state, the local community, and the individuals in our neighborhoods too that are coming by. It's just, uh, it helps really reaffirm why I love Idaho so much. I'm not a native of Idaho, but it, the support, and then all we do are just the conduit. And then United Way has the access to those other places. And you're absolutely right. That's, it's just, a, it, it helps so much to have our, and to just be a part of this program. I, I, there's several different aspects of it, but United Way has been a huge part for us. 
That's just so amazing. Uh, Jeff, is there anything else I didn't ask you about that you'd love to share about your work with United Way or just good things that are happening there in the community? Well, there, there is one thing I did want to mention is we primarily serve the working poor. And I think there's a misconception out there amongst some community members that, uh, you know, what's wrong? And, and I absolutely agree. There's really no reason for anybody to be hungry here in the United States because we have so much food that's available and even wasted. And uh, that's part of what we do is keep food from going to waste. But what I, I really want to make sure everybody understands is that most of the people that we're helping are, are really the working poor that are holding down two jobs, trying to make it and just sometimes get caught. And they come in sometimes, well, once a week, once a month, sometimes once a quarter, or there's some people I only see once a year. So it's, it's so great to have the support of the community to just be available when they need some additional help. And these are very proud, loving, respectful people. Uh, we serve our, our population here in Jerome and the people we serve at Martha Mary's Food Pantry is uh, 50 per, roughly 50% Hispanic and 50% Anglo. And that's the one thing that we have in common is food. And it brings us together at the table. I wish it was serving food, but at least while they're in line waiting for food. And we start to, to bridge that gap. And, and just recently, we, we did a, a thank you to the Farmers Feeding Family Program where uh, we had each of the families that received some food put an American flag in a, in a foam board to demonstrate to the USDA the number of people that they've helped, the number of families that they helped. And we had over 500 flags on that board. And, and so it was, a, it was a good visual on, on what we did. But what was better is just how happy people were to show their gratitude mm -hmm. in, in receiving the food. They were... And it didn't matter Hispanic or, or Anglo or who it was, everybody was thrilled to, to show that. And I think that's a great thing in today's world where we have so much, uh, not only diversity, but division. And, and we need to focus more on the unity that we all share. And in our case, it happens to be food. So that's another blessing. And I wanted to make sure and, and share that with you because uh, again, it takes all of us to come together and help and all of us do from the people that receive it to the corporate sponsors that help support us as well as the physical labor again that united way has done well and thank you for bringing up you know the the alice and we have a, a whole report that we do on the working poor which is the asset limited income restrained and it's it's amazing how much how much people do not understand that they are not just homeless people with the, their hands out there is just a lot of need in our community just because there's a lot of need in our community and we're in a rural community. A lot of other places don't understand our community as far as the need because they don't understand how rural we are. There's several towns that don't even have a store, a grocery store or a pantry or resources when they're in need. So what you do, Jeff, is amazing. And I, again, I know that you're still the orchestrator. You're still the person that is there driving uh, this this need in, in our community and um, not driving the need, but driving the, the resources. And I, I we could not do this without you. Well, it's, it's just a bless blessing and a privilege. Again, I get rewarded more than, than I give to this uh, with all the people. And I'm sorry, Connie, I could go on forever. So <laughs> are there some other questions or points you'd like me to talk about? No, I think you did it amazing. And I just, um, I just, one of the things you mentioned that I wanted to like close out with is just with all the divisions that, you know, we have in the world, I think food is one of those things that always bring us together. It's a common thing that we can all get around the table and enjoy a good meal. And, and I think it's such a blessing that we have folks like you that are making sure that people have food on their tables. And I think especially during COVID, I mean, I think we've all seen the prices go up at the grocery store and things be scarce. And when you're already on a fixed or limited income, seeing a 10 or 15% increase in some of your food items or not be able to find them at all can really put you and your family in a pinch. And so I think we're just super blessed to have organizations like um, United Way of South Central Idaho and um, Jeff, like you um, in our community, helping people in need. So I just really wanted to say thank you for coming on and sharing all that you guys are doing. 
No, you're, you're, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. And, and anytime that I can be of assistance. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you. Wow, Bill, I was so impressed with all of the amazing work that you and Sonia are doing in the community and partnering with employers like Dot Foods and Cliff Bar. Um, I just want to turn it back over to you to see what else we um, should share about getting involved, the power of um, collaborating with United Way of South Central Idaho and the good works that are happening here in the Magic Valley. Yeah, thank you, Connie. Um, yeah, it's it's actually, you know, um, awesome to hear, you know, um, we talk to the partners, you know, almost on a daily basis, you know, and, um, you know, they've chosen to, um, you know, to work with us and to ask for help and they, they show a level of, of trust and, and respect. And, and so we take that very seriously and, uh, um, and moving forward, it's, we continue to build those relationships and to better understand not just, um, what a company or an organization, um, has, but what is it that they, they inspire, you know, for their employees. What do they what do they want for their employees what do they want for their culture and um you know and a lot of organizations will say that you know we we don't necessarily have a lot of money um uh, we don't our employees they they do okay but um i don't really feel like we want to solicit them you know but what else can we do mm -hmm. and the answer is there's a lot you know um you know, I think you mentioned it, you know, before is that it's not just about the money. Um, we try to hold, you know, uh, volunteer opportunities to really show that you can give your time um, and that that time that you give is just as valuable as dollars, whether it's cleaning up a park or um, packing snack packs for kids at school or hygiene kits for, um, you know, homeless um, you know, families and, and individuals or, you know, homeless high school students, you know, there's, it, there's a lot of things that you can do as a company, as an individual, um, that's not just half, it doesn't just revolve around money, right? It's, uh, there's a lot of things that you can give, um, that still has an impact in our community. And overall, that's what it's about. Right. It's about all of us working together um, to to help each other out and and make a true difference in our community. We have an amazing community and the goal is not to um, necessarily change it, but just make it stronger. That's so perfect. I think everybody I think most people have an intrinsic want to to help others and to be of service but some people i think are left um unsure of how they can do that particularly if they maybe don't have the financial resources to do it or maybe alternatively if they're just busy um, and don't have time to search out what causes need help or funds i think the united way is such a great um kind of avenue for people that to who want to do something good but don't know how or what is most of need and you know i'm sure anyone called up and said hey i want to help but i don't know how you guys would have a number of different projects that they could either volunteer their time resources talents money um to and would make a huge impact on the community and i think that's just amazing yeah it, it's um there's always an opportunity to serve um, so I just would encourage everybody to reach out, um, to us, um, to, you know, a local pantry, a senior center, um, wherever. Um, but we are in, in communication with them, um, regularly and trying to work with them on a different level that, uh, they call us and say, Hey, we need some volunteers or I need two volunteers to do this. <laughs> And, or, or we really could use a certain item, you know, maybe it's blankets or coats or, or whatever. And so we work with our partners and from the optimists, we work with, um, you know, somebody like Dr. Crandall, who's passionate about having books for kids, you know, so we do a book drive. They don't have to be new. They can be used, you know, 
um, you know, and we can we can recycle those and get them back into the community, and it and it still has the same impact um, as giving us a dollar. You know, um, sometimes it and most times actually it it has a bigger impact than just what dollars are. Um, mm-hmm. We can leverage we can leverage dollars quite a bit. Um, we just you know we're working with um, a company and providing. They want to spend some dollars on food and we can, um, we're going to, we've already taken those dollars and um, matched it with the, another company and delivering twice as much food as we we're, we we're going to in the first place, you know, but sometimes it's, here's a, a box of books that, you know, if you gave us 10 bucks, we wouldn't be able to buy that. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of, of the dollar, you know, being leveraged or the item being leveraged is, is really powerful in a sense of, of overall impact in our community. That's so true. It's so amazing. Bill, I'm so looking forward to continuing to share uh, the amazing impact that the United Way of South Central Idaho has on our communities in future episodes and really appreciate you joining me today. I want to let folks know that if they're interested in learning more about how they can give, uh, they can visit unitedwayscid.org to learn more about um many opportunities that they can give and participate and give back to the community. I just want to thank you again uh, for joining us today, Bill. Yeah. Thank you, Connie. Um, Again, this is an amazing opportunity for us. We don't have the capability of doing this. So for you guys to um, step up and offer this um, is huge for us to be able to share these things and to, um, to grow in, in helping our community. So thank you very much. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thanks for listening to Secrets Out Idaho. You can follow Southern Idaho Economic Development on social media or visit southernidaho.org to learn more. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can be the first to hear more Secrets Out Idaho. Until next time.